How do you think it factors in Russ's return to Seattle? Will he be booed? Will he be focused? Will he be angry? Will he be motivated? How do you factor in the circumstances of this game? You can't ignore them. I think they do matter to the handicap here. Yeah, they, they do. And there's going to be a lot of emotions there. And if you ask me how, like, the Seattle Seahawks fans answer this bell, well, they're probably going to cheer him wildly before the game. Anytime that they show him on the screen, a lot of cheers. Maybe they'll announce that he's a captain for the game and he'll get his adulation, which he should. But once the game starts, you want him to throw six or seven interceptions out there. Now, is he going to do that? Probably not. But from a handicapping perspective, I'm not going to take it as, like, a downgrade. But you have to take a look at, though, to be honest. When you have a returning player to a city, it doesn't matter what sport it is, Kevin. If you are going to be a LeBron James and you play for the Miami Heat and you go back to Cleveland, do you want to score three points in that game and have your worst outing of the season? No. You want to go explode and say, this is what you're missing. It's no different with Russell Wilson. He loves the Seahawks. Quite frankly, he might even finish this game after they beat the Seahawks and say, go Hawks, in his press conference because he said that a hundred million times. He loved those fans and they loved him. But also at the same time, if he can go back there and go, you remember when you wouldn't let me cook? And every time I started to cook, you wanted to hand the football off? How about I just throw the ball 40 times tonight for 350 yards and four touchdowns? How does that sound, Seattle? Maybe that's the angle to get after. Russell Wilson, to me, is set up here to, I think, prove a point. The matchup is favorable. Seattle's secondary is very young due to injuries. A lot of rookies going to be starting in the secondary tonight for the Seahawks, which spells disaster. And here's the thing. We talk about the narratives of it all. Russell Wilson didn't leave Seattle just to win a championship or go to the playoffs, right, or team success. Let's be honest. It was for personal gain in terms of his statistics. Russell Wilson disappointed that he didn't have an opportunity to capitalize on what was an unbelievable start, you know, back in 2020. Remember the DRS? They went out there. They won their first five games. And in those games, four touchdowns, five touchdowns, five touchdowns, two touchdowns, three touchdowns. And it kept going on, by the way. Three, four, two. His first eight games of the season, he was out there with multiple touchdown passes overall. Russell Wilson, dominant in that perspective. And there's a lot of people that said, man, Russell Wilson last year was underwhelming. Was he? 25 touchdowns to six interceptions. Boy, oh boy, good luck if this guy actually catches fire. And how'd he finish the season? Four passing touchdowns and then three in his final two games. In fact, his final three games, he had multiple passing touchdowns for the Seattle Seahawks working his way back from injury. This is all pointing towards one bet for me. We'll get to the side. We'll get to the total. Russell Wilson over one and a half passing touchdowns at minus 128 in the FanDuel Sportsbook. Donnie, this is a bet that I have been thinking about for months. Months since the schedule was released. I don't see how Russ is not throwing multiple touchdowns here against his former team.